Hey guys, and welcome to our next episode of TNCBA's Tips, Tricks, and How To's. And guys, it is March. It's my birthday month, Kelsey. Woo! And my wife doesn't really enjoy that or get as much kick out of it as I do. But <laughs> March also means it's time to go cranking. That's exactly this is right. Probably one of my most favorite techniques in the entire season. One, it's moving. Mm -hmm. You fill in the bottom. You feel like you got something going on all the time, and you're just waiting for that next little jump off of a rock or off of a stump, and for that thing to load up with that big girl exactly. that's about to go up there and spawn. So, guys, we're talking about crankbaits today. And when it comes to crankbaits this time of year, we're talking early uh, pre-spawn situations, late winter. Uh, it may still be a little bit cold. You might be looking for a little warming trend. You get you about three maybe four days of some nice pretty weather some warm nights those warm nights are what's key uh, i'm definitely going to have me a crankbait on especially in the afternoons mm -hmm. once that sun gets up you know you've got those rocks warming up you've got those red clay banks on some of these douglas and cherokee lakes warming exactly. up exactly and one of those things to think about is these um what, what am i looking for you're looking for the the southern, what is oh, it, yeah. southern facing the southern banks. facing banks that are getting the most sunlight all the time because those are going to be the ones and that's a really mm -hmm. good point kelsey so when you're to, to bring in kind of breaking down a lake this time of year or that that point where they're starting to think about spawning those southern facing pockets where the sun is traversing the sky and it's just filling it up with sunlight all day long they're going to be warmer than those pockets that are in the shade or don't get as much sunlight so if you can key in on those in the afternoon you might run into some big girls later in the day that you mm -hmm. didn't didn't see happening, right? Exactly right. So, crankbaits, types of crankbaits, when to throw them, which ones to throw. My go-tos are going to revolve around, well, let's talk about color. Color is simple this time of year. You are going to give me red, red, or red. Yeah. Sounds okay, like, sounds like so, a good selection. So a, a shade there, the reds, oranges, and browns. I'm looking at a crawfish pattern this time of year. It just really seems to light those fish up. I don't care how clear the water is. I've caught them on red in, on Holston in some super clear water. And there's just something about this time of year that that red crankbait, and if you look at a lot of these crawfish this time of year as that water's starting to warm up, they have those oranges in them. They have those browns. Yes, they do. And it really stands out. So one thing that I'm looking at here with these baits one of my go-to's my first go-to probably is going to be a dt6 or a dt10 of course now you got those dt8s that are out there mm -hmm. okay and with these baits you got to be careful with them a little bit all right they they can't break easy on you yeah that dealing balsa with, <laughs> dealing with any of those other true balsas and you've got to be gentle with them but they have a flatter side to them they're a little bit more narrow and i'll show this one to you again here You've got somewhat of a narrow side. My next, or my more finesse, would be the shad wrap here. And you've got another narrow side on that as well. If you look at the sides there, these narrower, flatter sides of these crankbaits give it a little bit of a different action. Gives that tighter wobble. It's a, it a little bit tighter, kind of like thing, your, your rattle traps that yeah. you have out there. One thing I want to say that really shines with the, the rappel baits are their true running out of the package you don't have yes. to you don't have to work with them yeah there's there's not, not much not like of that those old bill normans you're not sitting there having to twist on that that line tie there at the front of the bait to try to get those things to run true but again those are going to be two great finesse baits now the the shad wrap to me is even more finessey than than the dt uh six or the dt10 the dt8 i'm going to hold off on the shad wrap for for even more finesse applications post front maybe it's a little bit more calm bluebird mm -hmm. skies uh, so if i go through the morning or i go through the day and i'm throwing that that crankbait a little bit i may step down to a shad wrap now i may start out with a size seven just for to get a little more depth out of it have a little bit more of a profile in the water but if i continue to need to go and this one here that i'm showing you guys is a uh, series five it is a number five shad wrap okay so that is something that you can step down to if you want to keep on going a little more finesse now another one that has come on the scene that's been hot in our area is is the rock crawler and that rock crawler by spro is, is meant to kind of mimic that uh, mimic that old wiggle wart exactly and you know those old wiggle warts are are super super pricey if you can find them because they're great great baits but the rock crawler is a really good bait in that red bug color so with a crankbait 
let's get to setups now. So we've talked about kind of how we might use a finesse style crankbait going to the series five or the number five shad wrap, going a little bit smaller, working with flat side crankbaits to have a little bit different wobble. Uh, but let's talk about my setup and what I like to use. Uh, when it comes to the, the DT series, if I'm throwing a DT six, I have what I refer to as my square bill rod. Mm -hmm. It's a shorter six, six, uh, bait casting rod. That's a medium with a medium action tip. I like for my crankbaits to have a very, very parabolic, slow reacting uh, bend to them because I want those fish to get that bait as the best they can. What kind of reel do you like to use for that type of situation? And, and this one for me, when I'm throwing in the shallower baits, I feel I feel like those fish that have moved up in the shallows are a little bit more reactive, mm -hmm. a little bit more active and, and go-getters. Um, I like a 6-4 to 1. Okay. So I like to kind of burn that bait a little bit more. I can stop it, start it, but it's moving really fast for me. Now, when it comes to these little bit deeper running, say the DT-10 or this rock crawler, I'm going to throw that on a 5-4 to 1. Uh, it's going to get down there and just kind of meander and dig a little bit more. Yeah, and, and, and it's a lot less... It's a lot less harder on you. Yeah, it's, it, it's easier to reel. Right. That, because that, that six, four to one or somebody throwing a seven, one to one, a high speed reel. Oh yeah. You're working yourself quite a bit. And those bigger bills is, that are diving a little bit deeper, you're going to work yourself pretty good. Um, so when it comes to the crankbait, that parabolic bin, like I said, the DT six, I throw it on my square bill rod, which is a shorter six, six, cause I'm typically closer to the bank. I'm focused on shallower cover. Um, so I have that shorter rod. Now, when I go to the DT 10 or the, the rock, uh, crawler, I'm going to step up to my, my seven, six medium action, medium fast, um, Shimano. That is, I can cast it a little bit farther cause I'm gonna be fishing deeper, maybe fishing some little bit deeper points with that five, four to one. Uh, I'm also going to be probably throwing somewhere in the neighborhood. I might go to 10 pound test if I feel like I need to get kind of a little more finessing, a little more depth but I lean towards that 12 and sometimes that 14 because I'm typically around rocks. Yeah. And, and I'll be honest with you. I mean, really when I think crankbait, I, I think trying to get as much depth as I can out of my right. bait. So I normally go with a 10, Yeah, I, but that's where I feel my confidence. Yeah. So, I mean, and the, and the only reason not to go with the 10 is in those cases where if I know I'm around a lot of rough stuff and just to help with a little bit of that abrasion, exactly. but that 10 pound test is going to help you get the maximum depth. Uh, I, I'd never go below 10 though with my crankbaits that are beating around the bottom like this, just for the, the sake of that abrasion. Um, so that's kind of the rod and reel setup for these, uh, for those two, for the DT 10, uh, the DT six, and maybe the rock crawler, but talking about the spinning rod setup for the, for the shad wrap, that shad wrap is a much, much lighter bait. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go to a spinning rod in that application. I may actually step down to eight pound test in that case, just to make it easier to cast. That's one of the pains in the rear end when it comes to the shad wrap is if you yeah. have a windy day, it can be kind of tough to cast. It can get up oh, there yeah. and, and try to spin on you. So you might want to go to a lighter application with the spinning rod with that shad wrap, especially that number five. The number seven, I can actually get away with throwing that on like my, my square bill rod. But again, with crankbaits, I'm looking for deflections. Okay. So this bait, I want it to be touching the bottom. I don't need it to be dredging. I don't need it to be sticking its head so far in the mud. Yeah. Nobody can find it, but I want it to be bouncing off a stump or bouncing off a rock because those girls, when they come up there, they're looking for warmth, right, Kelsey? Mm. Oh yeah. And they want to warm up. They're, they're full of eggs. They're trying to incubate those eggs. They're trying to warm up. So anything, especially logs that are outside of the water and then run into rocks that are right on the edge of the bank, because those are going to be catching the most sunlight and that heat from that tree is going to just make its way down just like a pot. If you put a spoon in a pot, yeah. the heat's going to run up It'd the handle. Like, it'd be like places that you look for to throw a spinnerbait or something like that yes. when, it, when the water's warming up. Yes, yes. Shallow, shallow water, stuff like that. Those same areas. And I want to be around them. And like Kelsey said earlier, where that sunlight's been beating on them all day long. That's going to put that heat in the water. Those fish are going to pull up in those areas and I'm going to be able to throw this crankbait around. Similar to like our talk with the jerk bait, I do like to have some wind. Uh, now I'm not afraid to throw it if it is bright and sunny, but I do want some wind out there with it. These baits still seem to really, really shine at times when we have some overcast. The crankbait bites really good with some overcast and some wind. But the easiest way to create your own overcast and get some shade is run mud lines. If you can find a good windy day, or even if there's a lot of boat traffic on the lake, they'll create your own mud lines for you. You don't need the wind as much. Find you some mud lines. Those fish will use that mud line as an ambush point. Oh, yeah. 
and I'm going to get up there on those points or get up there into those shallows where I've got a mud line and I'm going to make sure I'm casting into the mud and I'm out far enough off the bank so that I'm coming out of that mud line where those fish might be trying to attack that prey right there on that edge and make and that transition. So again, crankbaits, I want it touching the bottom. I want it to be bouncing off stuff. I don't need it dredging. But the other thing to have in this case, and this is something we talked about with some of the things to have for like being tournament ready, I'm going to have me a pocket rocket. I'm going to have me oh, something to, to dislodge <laughs> these baits. You are going to get hung up. It's a crankbait. It's notorious for that. So be ready. Have one of those, those pocket rockets uh, from Watson's. You can slide that thing down the line, get yourself unhung really quick without going in there and causing too much of a disturbance. But a crankbait, guys, this time of a year, you can also cover a lot of water. And these exactly. fish are in major transition modes. And don't be afraid to burn down a bank with a crankbait and then come back later in the day because you never know, Kelsey. These fish are moving up all the time, well, aren't they? Well, that and then another thing with a crankbait is you can cover various depths. Yes. So, I mean, that that's another thing to think of. I mean, it, like you said, they are coming up, but sometimes they're just down a little bit deeper. So yep. you might want to start off a little deeper in the mornings yep. and work your way up as the day goes on. And that's a very, very good point. They're starting out a little bit deeper. So I will start out with that, say, DT-10. I'll work that little bit deeper section of the water column, move up as we go later in the day. But the spring is, is, is syno synonymous with things changing by the, the hour. Okay, early spring, it's going to be changing all day long. Um, like I said, if you go down a bank, you throw that crankbait, you don't get any bites on it, you maybe pick up a couple bites somewhere else, don't be afraid to come back through there because they may have moved up on you. Don't be afraid to change the, the style of, of crankbait that you're throwing to go to that more finesse shad wrap. Uh, this time of year, I'm not throwing the traditional, uh, more of a, a round back and belly like your Strike Kings. Uh, those XDs, that'll come into play later on in the summer. But guys, the crankbait is something that you can throw and have a lot of confidence in. It's not super finesse. It's not super slow. You feel like you got some action. So if you're somebody that's new to fishing and you're jumping in there here in this March time frame and it's pre-spawn, I really, really suggest putting a crankbait in your hand because it's something that you can go fish catch fish, catch really good fish, and you feel like you're doing something all day. You don't get bored. Sometimes I worry about that with, with younger people or newer people to the sport. Oh, you know, yeah. you go out there and, and some people just like to throw a worm or they like to throw something that's slow moving, but especially if it's cold, I need my body doing something. <laughs> yeah, you got to keep that blood flowing. <laughs> you got to keep that blood flowing, guys. And you sit around there and you're working that worm and you're tired and you're just done with it. But pick you up a crankbait. If you have a warm afternoon, even if it's a cold morning, warm afternoon. Think afternoons. A lot of times this time of year, think those south, southern facing pockets and points that are getting a lot of sun and then have you a good variety of crankbaits, of, of styles of crankbaits that might be a little more finesse, might be a little bit tighter wobble. And then also keep in mind the fact that your rods, you want them to be medium, moderate actions, something mm -hmm. that those fish are going to be able to, to inhale that bait when they're coming up behind it and you're dealing with trebles so yeah. you, you need a, you need a good play in that rod so that you can fight them to the boat they're cold or lethargic they're not necessarily going to jump in much, as much right now and go as crazy uh, so it's a little bit easier to land them sometimes but you still need that rod in case they make that big surge there at the end guys i love crankbait fishing i love the month of march these fish are moving up it's a great time of year to be on the water Get down to Cherokee, get down to Douglas, find you some rocky banks, some clay banks with some rocks mixed in. And don't even be afraid later on in the year as we move towards the end of March to start throwing a crankbait up on Holston or Watauga. Yeah, you're going to get yourself some good bites. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Get you a crankbait put on your, the deck of your boat. Go catch you some fish. Have some fun. Don't hook somebody around you. That's another thing about crankbait season. Watch where you're casting. The hooks will be flying, guys. I hope you all have a great time out on the water, and we will see you all later.